First of all, I'd like to start out with an apology. I know it's been a while since my last video. I guess uh, things just happened in the world, so uh, it's been kind of hard to put one together. My intentions were good though. I was gonna do a video of my 69 Mustang Fastback, and we were just gonna go out and do a kind of a drive around and talk about the details of the car. But, as you know, that car has a tendency to fail me when I need it. First memory I have of a muscle car was my dad taking me to kindergarten in a 1969 black cherry maroon Mach 1 Mustang. The Keystone Classic wheels, Skyjackers in the back, you know, typical 70s hot rod. In this video, not only do you get to see me upgrade a few parts, fix a few broken things, but we also drive the car to a local tourist spot. And I guarantee you've heard of it. All right, for the first step, you gotta get the car up on some jack stands, get the rear wheels off. I've had some questions about what size tire I'm running. This is a 285-40, 18 on the back. Now, uh, people are like, can you really fit that under a stock Mustang? Well, the secret is, is that I did use mini tubs on this car. It has uh, the Detroit Speed mini tubs in the back. This, this is a one inch wider. I took it all the way back to where the frame rail was. I didn't go inside the frame rail because it actually gets into the leaf spring before you get into there. So the clearance, you know, whether I took it back any further or not, wouldn't matter because the leaf spring is actually the limiting factor. You'll see there's a little shiny spot right here. Well, this is where the uh, tire may be rubbing when I'm going down the road. I've been having trouble with that. So we'll make some clearance for that using a hammer. Another thing that I always suggest you do on these old cars is roll the fender lips in. So you'll see this is smooth up here so it doesn't rub doesn't hit anything. It's a bad day when you cut a tire with your fender lip. You remove the brake and brake caliper out of the way. This little access hole will get you to the bolts that hold the axle in. There's one right there. There's four of those. Step is to remove this rear axle assembly. There we go. Pull the axle out. I did want to show you how these Explorer brakes work on a nine inch rear end. So this has the uh, Torino style ends on it that are the smaller. And this is the, the Explorer brake assembly. It just bolts on the end. That's all there is to it. The only other thing you got to do to put these on is between the bearing an outer retaining plate, you have to put a spacer. The spacer needs to be the exact thickness of the plate of this plate right here. So you can either buy those or have one made. That is not paint. That is metal shavings in the oil. Uh, since I got the rear end out and the gears are totally thrashed, we are going to take the rear leaf springs out of this car, and I'm gonna replace them with what they call a mid-eye uh, leaf spring. A mid-eye, I'll show you the difference. An extra leaf, they're also thicker. And then this is what they're talking about. See how this one's curved down like that? That effectively lowers the car, and this one's just straight and curves around. So anyway, that should lower the car a little bit. Looks like it's probably gonna be a stiffer ride. Hopefully it ends that spring wrap problem I've been having. changing these springs out besides the obvious that they're 50 years old and they're super weak is that I'm having to run lowering blocks just to get to the right height and lowering blocks are not good for performance so hopefully these springs fix that all right so the next step you want to do is get up here and remove this rear shackle bolt So now with the rear removed, you just gotta take out this front bolt. Three quarter inch, right there. Two hours later. Here's the tools I've used to try to remove the front bolt. I got cut off wheel, cut off grinder, saws all. Basically there's a bolt that goes through. It's an eye bolt that goes through the leaf spring. It goes through the rubber and it has a, rubber, a metal sleeve inside of it. 
Well, that rubber, that metal sleeve spun out. This is what spun out inside that um, eye bolt. The bolt goes through it and it rusted to itself. So, okay, it's uh, been a few days. I ordered some blades online. Just to remind you, I burned through like four of these Milwaukee blades trying to cut through that axle shaft. And uh, I bought these. So these blades supposedly last 50 times longer than what I had before. We shall see. Thank you, Diablo Steel Demon. Then obviously the next step would be to take the bolt, put it through the frame, through there, and put the nut back on. I had to buy new bolts. These are grade eights. Don't use anything less. So you're probably wondering, why did the rear end gears go bad after like 100 miles? Well, I'll tell you why. We reused the nut on the pinion support, and that nut backed off and let the pinion get loose, and it caused the gears to go bad. So a $7 nut costs $300 to fix. It's the world-famous Cadillac Ranch. 